Alright guys, we're back staring at my engine bay, and in this video we are going to be upgrading the heat management on my top mount turbo kit. I know heat is a big concern for a lot of you guys, and a lot of people have asked me questions about if I'm worried about it and what I'm doing to make sure I'm addressing all of those concerns. Obviously I've already done a little bit to help make sure that my car is as safe as possible using the top mount turbo kit and running higher boost levels, but I am going to be upgrading a pretty critical component of the heat management on my car so I just want to show you guys what I'm doing why I'm doing it and hopefully if this is something that's a big concern of yours this can kind of answer any questions you have so that you know the right direction to go for your car if you're interested in a top mount turbo kit now as always if you guys are new to the channel I use my videos to help keep you updated on the latest developments related to our cars as well as discuss technical topics so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work if you're interested in more videos like that, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more coming out in the future. So the big thing that I'm going to be upgrading is my turbo blanket. And this is a really nice piece. I got it from PTP. It's designed for an EFR turbo, so it fits the turbo pretty well. But there are a lot of ways that this can be approved, especially in the way that it's used in our cars. The biggest thing is that we don't use the regular wastegate that comes with an EFR turbo. We remove that and install an adapter so that we can reuse the stock electronic wastegate for the B58 engine. And when you're doing that, it really decreases how much room you have in there. So you can kind of see down here, my wastegate is sandwiched between the turbo and the side of the engine bay. So there's not really a lot of room there. It just kind of is what it is. It doesn't hit anything, but it is really important to make sure that you have you know everything else kind of set up around that so that you have the right amount of clearance and obviously right here there isn't really any clearance it's pretty much rubbing right now and it's really hard to get the turbo blanket to sit all the way down in there because of how tight everything is also i talked to you guys a little bit about exhaust leak issues because i had several issues with exhaust leaks last year when i was tuning the car luckily i was able to find it but basically what happened was the bolt on the turbo backed off. So while I was driving, I started seeing my wastegate duty cycle was getting extremely high and my boost levels were dropping. Once I dug into it, I found that the turbo was kind of loose on top of the manifold. And so I pulled the gasket and it was completely blown out. So basically when I would go full throttle, a bunch of exhaust would blow through that hole, reduce how much air was actually making it to the turbo and that would reduce how much boost I could make because I'm basically losing efficiency outside of that blown gasket. So through that process and everything else that I've done since I just can't leave the car alone and I just keep messing with stuff, I've had this turbo kit apart a number of times. Like I've probably taken the downpipe off 20 times. I've probably taken the turbo off 10 times. And I just keep changing stuff, trying different things. Usually it doesn't amount to anything, so I don't make a video on it, but... That's a lot of what I do. I just test different things to see what I like and make sure the car is the best that I can build it. But what that means is that I'm definitely seeing a big issue with how this turbo blanket fits with the kit. I'm not able to access any of those bolts that were causing me an issue. And especially when you first install this kit, you're gonna wanna drive it, do a couple heat cycles, and then retorque everything down. So to get to the bolts, I've got to basically pull the downpipe, remove the wastegate, pull the turbo blanket, and do all of this stuff just to access those bolts and tighten it down. So I wanted something with a little more clearance, something that's a little bit more sleek and just cleaner to look at than this turbo blanket that doesn't really fit it very well. Another thing that some people are concerned about regarding turbo blankets is that they can catch on fire if they pick up oil. So potentially if you have like an oil leak from one of the fittings and oil gets on the blanket, the blanket's going to get extremely hot when the turbo gets into full boost and it can potentially ignite. This is, you know, not a huge issue if you don't have any oil leaks, but it's definitely something that can happen. And like I said, if you're taking the turbo on and off a lot, eventually you're going to have to drain the oil and just making sure that it's as safe and clean as possible is a nice thing to do for peace of mind so that you're not worried about potentially getting oil on the turbo blanket and then driving the car and potentially having a risk of it catching on fire. So I've got a new option. This kind of addresses all of those issues. I still want to run a turbo blanket. I know some people just run without one and they say that it should be fine, but since it's right by the valve cover and everything, I want to run a turbo blanket or something to protect it 
from a heat management standpoint, so I'm not, you know, causing a failure with one of the other components that are near to it. So I did get a different one. I'm going to show you guys what it is, and hopefully this will address all of those concerns. Wait, I forgot my dad. Ready now? Not yet. Now am I ready? All right. Wait, I forgot the other one. And the other one too. Oops, the other one. Yeah, perfect. All right, so here we have the turbo off the car. Um, this was a little bit of work, like I said, just because of the turbo blanket. And you can kind of see what it looks like. It got torn up a lot more because I just wasn't careful this time since I knew I wasn't going to be reusing it. But you can see some of the areas where the wastegate was rubbing. So that was kind of just making things a lot more difficult for me when I'm actually using this kit. So what we're going to be switching to is this new Inconel Shield from Advanced Thermal Products. And this is basically a two-piece shield, so it wraps around the turbo like this, and it's going to keep all of the heat inside. So like I said, this has a lot of benefits. One is it's extremely low profile. You can see how thin it is. And also it's all metal, so you don't have to worry about it soaking up oil and creating that fire hazard or fire risk that comes with a woven fabric thermal blanket like that one. So I'm really looking forward to getting this installed. Plus it's just unique and it looks pretty cool in the engine bay. Unfortunately, it's a lot more difficult to install because it uses these wires. So that's why we're taking the turbo off. We basically join these two parts together and then everywhere we have these pins requires us to wrap it with the wires in order for it to stay on. So we're going to go ahead and wrap it on to the exhaust housing and we'll see how this looks once it's fully installed. All right, so here's the final product. And as you can see, it's very form fitted to the actual exhaust housing. So it rounds out all the curvatures and it's even easy to access these nuts with the actual thermal cover installed. So that's what makes this so convenient, so much cleaner and simpler. Um, also, you can see how the actual wires run the way that I did it. I basically just went around the little pins a couple times on each side, and I still have some wire left over. So it works really, really well. Still leaves room for the actual wastegate. Unfortunately, it doesn't cover this space. They just left a big cutout for clearance for the wastegate, but I mean, I kind of need it probably since this space is so tight anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. And the wastegate still has enough room for the full travel to work. So yeah, got this installed. Now we'll go ahead and put it back on the car and see how it looks in the engine bay. So here it is all buttoned up and you can see everything looks much more sleek. It's all form fitted to the turbo. So I can now actually see all of the turbo hardware there's absolutely no rubbing on the actual wastegate arm. Kind of hard to see on video, but a lot more space for the wastegate arm to actually move. Um, and it's just kind of better from a safety standpoint. You know, again, this is all metal, so I don't have to worry about it soaking up oil or anything. In a worst case scenario, it just overall is a better product for this purpose. I also did just take the opportunity to put this vibrant plug right here on the turbo. Before that had the little bung for your boost reference and I had like a cap on there then I put a bolt in there and then I found this plug on Vibrant's website. I'll put a link to it down in the description as well but it's just really short so the other bolts that I was using I kind of felt like it was sticking really far inside of the turbo. Probably doesn't matter but just having this one that's really short makes me have the more peace of mind. I know there's nothing sticking out inside of the turbo, disrupting airflow or anything like that. So I know probably overpaid for a simple little bolt buying it from Vibrant, but it worked perfectly for my needs. So yeah, this is kind of the end goal. I think this worked out really well. I definitely recommend checking them out if you have an EFR turbo. This will fit regardless of the turbo kit. This is based on the turbo itself. So whether you have a top mount, bottom mount, or any other EFR setup, you should be able to run this kit with your B2 frame turbo, and it's a pretty reasonable price too. So yeah, hopefully this video helps you guys out. 
or maybe you just find this interesting seeing some of the stuff I do in the background. Normally I don't film stuff like this because I just change things on my setup on a whim, you know, whenever I feel like it, just feel like trying something out, but I thought I'd put this one on video and show you guys what's going on. So yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I hope this helps. If you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below.